the weather has really affected my sunflowers. I'm trying to get over here. So I've got I've got sunflowers popping up everywhere. This one's just from the soil probably and some bugs. It's not doing that great. This one's doing pretty good. So we got lots of little ones. But they should have been a lot bigger by now. And this weather has been getting cold and hot and cold and hot. The rain has been sporadic. Let me see, I wanna show you some of my big ones. So here's one that's really big. So what is that? That's three inches maybe. <laughs> Let's see if I can find, oh, here we go. So here's like my biggest. That's about six inches. There's a few of them right here that are four to six inches. Crops in general are kind of doing the same thing. So that's not good. Across the street, we have this wheat growing. I don't know much about wheat, but this wheat looks like it's struggling. Um, I mean, it looks good when you just look at it. It's got uh, the wheat berries are coming in. I don't know how big they're supposed to be, so I don't know how well that's coming in. But I was looking up the height of how big wheat would normally grow, and this is at the bottom of the scope. Um, two to four feet tall, I guess, is the range of, of wheat. And this is probably right at two feet tall. I'd be kind of surprised if they were growing a variety that only grows two feet tall. I think, I think the weather's been stunting it. And it does look like it's getting close to harvest. It's turning brown. It's not, it's not green anymore. So I think, and, and this time of year is a harvest time. So I got my block cemented in and I'm pulling away some of this grass to try to make a little bit of a bump here that'll keep water from coming right down the stairs when we get a big rain. But I'm also cutting out that grass and reusing it over here. So I'm kind of creating little small patches of sod and then I can try to cover up my red mud and maybe we won't get a bunch of red mud tracked all over our floor when we just finished pressure washing it. <laughs> I'm over here on the side of the house where our property meets this other property. And so we don't mow the other property. <laughs> but I needed some grass, so I'm cutting some sod out right here between the properties. This is an area that, you know, doesn't really... I don't know, it's just an easy area to cut from where there's good grass, good mowed grass, and it'll just kind of create a little, a little blank spot along the property line, I guess. So eventually that'll grow back and it helps me with my project right now. I wouldn't say that I'm done, but it's been a long, a lot of heavy work. Um, all this, I cut out all this and then replaced it again with the grass that I'm taking from the side of the house. I'm trying to make a little hump right here so that the water will get caught in here and travel down and go around. So I'm hoping that water doesn't come down into the picnic shelter. Then I've got it on this side coming around. I think all of this up here is gonna flow really well down this way. So I've been putting in my own cutout sod all the way down and really put a whole lot into this corner here. 
And one nice thing about this is that people can walk on it soon without tracking red mud up onto the concrete, which Cindy just sent, spent a lot of hours pressure washing after we had so much mud come down from a, a lot of really heavy rains. I think I'm gonna finish this, uh, this one more row right here of grass and then probably just leave it like that for a while and see what happens with, with the grass growing back in. It looks awesome when your grass is right up against the edge of your block. <laughs> As that grows in, it won't be so beautiful. Of course, here you see some of the landscape fabric showing. So I guess the area that I need to work on another day it's where this water is gonna continue on down this way. I think I need to build this up a little bit, get some grass in here. Cause right now I think the water, it will either soak through or go around this way and come into here. And I, we, we really need it to just go out in front of the barn and go off towards the woods. Here's another set of guinea hens that have started pipping one of them has been working for over 24 hours to get out and is still just sitting there, not quite getting out. I pulled away a little bit of shell. We don't want to pull away too much because the chicks need to work their own way out for their own health. But I pulled away a little bit of shell trying to help because their eggs are difficult. You might have seen this egg move a little bit just now. It pipped the tiniest bit, like just a tiny hole. And I also pulled a little bit of shell away, trying to help that one too. Hopefully they'll come out and they'll survive. It's been a really long time, especially on this one. I decided to go ahead and break these birds out because they're taking so long to come out and I'm concerned that it's gonna die, this first one. The second one seemed the same. The, the membrane inside the egg seemed to be really, really tough. And I'm just, I don't know. So they say that you shouldn't help a chicken get out of the egg. And I think this is gonna be our first time seeing how they do. Oh, there you are. I see your face now. <laughs> We're gonna let them struggle with getting themselves clean. At least that'll give them some stuff to struggle over. I think the struggle is part of their survival. There's the brand new chicks with the ones that are a little older, just a, just a few days difference. After the recent rain, we have a nice pond in Caleb's house. <laughs> Since we never did cut out the, the blocks of wood at the doors, it holds water pretty nicely and not quite deep enough for swimming. This morning I could hear a guinea hen in the front yard making its loud, loud noise. Turns out it wasn't ours. This one right here showed up in our front yard and it was trying to get in the chicken coop in the front yard. We let it in there and the uh, rooster went crazy and drove it out. But I brought it over here to this coop where we have the guinea hens and it's become part of the family and just a, it hasn't even been half an hour. So it's got a new place to live and we put out the word to see if a neighbor lost one so we can get it back home. Her head is, looks blue colored. And of course she's much lighter than the other ones. That's kind of neat since uh, we lost one. We had, I guess you call it a guinea cock instead of a rooster, but uh, the male, we had lost the male. Fortunately, we got those fertilized eggs which have now hatched into chicks. We're gonna give those to our neighbors, Rico and Monica and their children. I'm headed down here into the 
pasture expansion. And I'm dragging this log behind me, bringing some cardboard, and let's see if I can get a fire started today. It's been raining for two days, so everything around it's really nice and wet to be safe. Especially since it's uh, kind of surrounded by trees down here, kind of uh, not, not real close, but you know, just want to be careful. I'm hoping also the fact that all that wood is wet from that rain will make it burn slowly because it's very close to some nice large oak trees and I don't want to damage those trees. So I'm gonna take a look at it today, see if we can get something going in a nice, safe way. Okay, I pulled a hose down here. Okay, everything was so wet, I had to continuously put sticks on there to keep that thing going. It might go on its own now, or it might just burn out, but I'm gonna keep moving stuff over onto it to see if we can get at least a good portion of this pile burnt. Right now, it seems like it's really flaring up. So that's not much of a fire, but <laughs> we're getting, getting a little bit done. I'm concerned. If we get a really good fire going, I think half this tree might look like fall time in in a few days. It, the leaves might change colors. One side of the leaves might die and fall off. Don't really want that to happen. This thing is taking continuous maintenance of throwing stuff on it. It's already dying down again, so I better get back to it. You can see how wet the surrounding wood is. I've got all these logs burning in the middle and it's not even catching this on fire or catching this on fire. I have to keep uh, shoveling the coals up into the pile to get more burning to happen. So that's kind of, it's going slower than I want it to, but it's kind of what I want it to do because this is sort of shielding that tree that I'm worried about as I burn up into there and it's burning slow, so I don't have this giant blaze going half as tall as that tree. But like I keep saying, it's just going slower than I, I want it to. I've been out here for, I think three hours now. I'm getting uh, further into the pile. Maybe, maybe I've burned 20% now after four or five hours. <laughs> This is what I was concerned about is the heat coming up and baking the trees leaves. I'm hoping that by the time this heat gets from here to there, it's cooled down enough that it's not doing much damage. The wind seems to be blowing this way. So I'm also hoping that it just doesn't get to much of the tree. Had to run to the house for a minute. You can see my smoke. This middle tree is the one that we keep looking at that I'm hoping it'll be just fine. This past hour has been a lot of progress. I'm uh, grabbing branches, throwing them in the middle over and over and over. And I'd say more than half the pile is burned now, maybe two thirds. So it's coming along good. I'm not sure how this tree will do. It's getting a lot of heat on it. I think this one will do worse than the big one. I'll try to remember to take a look at these in a few days and see if they're turning colors or turning brown. We'll see. Now I'm at the stage where I'm taking the shovel, pushing everything together, trying to consolidate the fire, but I can't get close to it without putting a towel over my head so I can see the ground, but it shields the heat. <laughs> I'm also moving a lot of coals over to this log to try to get that thing burned up. 
I'm gonna try to move all these pieces of wood and just really concentrate the fire here.